yogis and yoga enthusiasts. My name is Laura of The Wellness Nook and welcome to our yoga vocabulary series where we're going to discuss different yoga words that you'll hear outside of the different poses or asanas. Um, today's word is drishti. I will spell it out for you because it's not our common language. Most people, unless you're from India, are not used to that way of speaking. Um, even though Hindi is not Sanskrit. Side note. Anyway, back to drishti, the, the word of the day. This is your, you'll hear it in different yoga classes. Sometimes they'll say, find your drishti. Um, that's your gaze, basically, where you're looking. Um, this is relevant in a few different ways, actually. The most obvious and common way that people realize that drishti is relevant is in balancing postures. So if you're doing tree pose, or if you're doing dancer's pose, anything where you're balancing, especially on one leg where it's a bit more of a challenge, it's really important to kind of focus on an area versus letting yourself kind of wander around because it's gonna throw off your balance. So people just think of it, okay, find your, your drishti, find the point you're gonna focus on so you can easily balance. This kind of segues into the other relevance of it because it's why does focusing on a specific point actually help our balance? So, our eyes, how they work is there's a few different muscles in them that create movement. And then the neural pathways come to the back of our head. If you feel your cranium and can kind of feel underneath your cranium, so you're kind of like not pushing it back, but you're kind of pushing it up underneath it, and you wiggle your eyes around like left to right, sometimes you can actually feel that movement. Um, it's a very subtle movement. Cranial sacralists and all that are really trained in subtle touch and can definitely feel that movement. So this is the base of your skull. This is right where your head is attaching into your neck. So the movement of your eyes actually will affect your head and affect your neck. So in relation to balance, when you're trying to balance because we in our, he in our head is the balancing the vestibule cochlear system, um, that, that system's in our head. So if we move that around a lot, it's gonna really throw off our balance. So it's really important to think about keeping our head calm and steady, our gaze fixed, and that's gonna help balance our head so then we're not constantly overcorrecting to try to get into our, our balance. Another relevance then leading from balance to our drishti would be, for example, in trikonasana or triangle pose, you commonly are looking up to your hand. Um, and then we say to look up to your hand to not just help with neck rotation, but to also look that way. Um, when you're coming into cat cow, something as simple as that, it's look to your third eye. So you're looking up again, you're getting that movement in your neck from your eyes. Or if you're coming into twists, you look over. Again, that's just helping you twist your body, not just your spine, but twist your body just a little bit further, even so basically from your, you're thinking from your eyes to your hips, not just the spine, because everything's a full body movement. You know, we do try to isolate different areas, but for the most part, we are, we look at the body in a holistic way, the whole body. So, so that is your drishti. <laughs> It is your gaze, it is your focus, and it's the extension of your asan. It, you know, you don't want your asan to just stop, you know, and using your gaze helps you extend it. Now, this does not mean if you need to look elsewhere in an asan to make it more accessible to you, does not mean you're doing it wrong. For example, if you're in trikonasana and you can't look up because it bothers your neck and you need to look down, that's fine. That's doing the pose true to yourself. So it's very key with yoga and anything to really listen to your own body and go with your own body's limitations. So even though traditionally people have looked up, if looking down suits you better, that's what you need to be doing. You want to always, you do want to challenge yourself, but you don't want to injure yourself. 
You need to find that sweet spot between discomfort and change and pain and injury. There's a place in between, like before you go from, so you have discomfort and change, and then after that, that comes into painful injury. You do not want to cross that line. So you want to make sure you are always in that changing place, that place where you're letting yourself grow, but you're not pushing yourself too far. All right, well, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please comment below. Any requests, you can comment. If you liked it, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you would like to get more videos, you can subscribe and ring the bell to get notified, and I will see you next time.